welcome to Tom's Aviation. I hope you enjoy the next video and subscribe. I'm Mike Schrader with Epic Aircraft. Behind me you see the Epic E1000GX. It's uh, kind of an, uh, um, it's a, a buildup of an aircraft that originally began back in uh, 2005 as the Epic LT. Uh, it's a, that back then it was an experimental kit plane. Customers would come out to our facility, build the aircraft. Uh, then we would uh, help them finish it at the end of it and um, they would take away an Epic LT. Uh, we just continued that program in 2013 because in 2012 we started the certification process of the E-1000. E-1000 went through seven years of certification and in, in uh, November 2019 uh, we got the aircraft certified. Um, then of course we had COVID year so we had a layoff and then we we're back on again and uh, during that time period we started uh, putting together the E-1000GX, not putting it together but we started uh, developing the E-1000GX which is the uses the um, uh, GFC 700 autopilot, Arsel 5 blade composite propeller, and, um, it, um, and just a, a new version of the aircraft with Z1000GX. The uh, Epic itself is an all carbon fiber composite construction aircraft utilizing a, G, uh, a PT667A 1200 horsepower engine. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, a Hartzell 5 blade composite propeller. The aircraft is uh, designed um, for high altitude operations, uh, 34,000 feet service ceiling, uh, initial rate of climb at sea level is 4,000 foot a minute, and we, uh, we're up to 34,000 feet in about 18 minutes. have delivered uh, 14 of the aircraft to date. Uh, we're actually uh, doing the deliveries and we'll, we're booked out through the end of this year, 2021, and we'll look at uh, start the bookings in 2022. The E-1000GX is a six place aircraft uh, a pilot, five passengers, uh, 1,100 pound payload with full fuel. So you have, literally you can uh, fill it up, go and go to the distance, and not leave anything up and leave anything behind. Uh, that's one of our early monikers. So it's a, it's a, just a great, fantastic airplane. Um, that's just a quick overview of, of it. But uh, we can go look at the interior real quick, like. So as you can see, uh, you're sitting in uh, the two rear seats. That's a club seating. So we're up the the middle seats here. Um, forward seats and the, and the panel. Uh, I mentioned earlier it's this uh, E1000 uh, GX. We have the uh, GFC 700 autopilot with the, with the uh, G1000 NXI avionics equipment. Uh, behind you, baggage compartment. Uh, we have uh, in that baggage compartment we have uh, seven bags of, uh, of uh, care full size carry on bags with a duffel bag in the back and two bags between the front seats here. So you can see the cockpit. That we've designed here. We spent um, probably eight months to a year of literally clay modeling this uh, panel to make sure the fit and finish and everything is what we want, how we want to reach and and uh, fly the aircraft with simplicity. Uh, we have a switching system over here. We have pre-start, so we go left to right to start, go down pre-taxi, left to right to taxi, and we have our systems that begin here and finish up over here with lighting and ice system. Very simple switch system. Uh, we've developed a knee bolsters on the bottom with the with, with the circuit breaker panel so we can easily see all the circuit breakers and how they're put together. Uh, the G1000 NXI MFD, a large MFD in the middle, uh, two PFDs on the side. We've also designed around uh, safety of the of the cockpit, or excuse me, safety of flying. Uh, we look at uh, each side has a uh, an AOA in place. So we've designed this what we call the, uh, this wedge panel up here on top. Uh, we have an AOA on each side and in that we also have the enunciator panel on both sides. Uh, the gear position and the flap position on both sides. Uh, so when you're flying it's just literally you're looking out over the over the cowline like on final approach and you just glance down. Uh, you can do any warnings come up. It's just a quick check warning. You can see it just by a glance down. You can see on your flight operations, your AOA, how it would have, how it would work, with just a glance. So there's no searching for the cockpit of what your flight status is, or what your aircraft status is. Uh, just before takeoff, you push the toga button, and all the lights, all the unnecessary lights light up. If they're green, they're good to go. If there's any yellow or red, uh, cautionary or emer or uh, 
um, read, then you have to take a look at it and uh, see what the, what the answer is to solve those problems. Um, from there, we got our easy access to our, easy access to our landing gear, our flaps, uh, fuel selector. So fuel selector down here is automatic fuel selector. So every two minutes, it switches from left to right. Um, there again, easy uh, setup on the on the control system here for the engine. Uh, we have our condition lever, our prop, and our power lever. Uh, when you do a start on this, it's, it's just simple as uh, st start uh, hit the hit the starter, uh, advance the fuel, and hit the starter igniter, advance the fuel. Uh, once it lights up. Uh, and you're ready to go. You slide the, this this condition lever forward, the prop lever forward, and you're ready to taxi. And uh, from there on out, for the remainder of the flight, all you do is handle the power lever. Uh, and you don't touch these other two levers until you come in and shut down for the day. One of the things we designed uh, the ergonomics into the airplane when we're flying the aircraft, uh, everything from the armrest to the sides, the armrests uh, taper up a little bit as you slide forward. So the shorter uh, individual that's sitting in the cockpit area uh, it hits them in the right hits hit them the right spot of the arm when they're resting their arm there. It's, it's kind of like the perfect fit. Uh, the yoke was uh, built around uh, the grip of the hand, so it just kind of rests on to the yoke itself. All the switches and buttons are within easy access on the on the on the yoke itself. Uh, when we say it's an all carbon fiber aircraft, we mean that uh, we look at the yoke as actually an all carbon fiber yoke. In fact, a very lightweight, very strong, and actually beautiful. Uh, the one thing we look at is the simplicity of operation through the for the flight of the aircraft. Like I said earlier, uh, everything is easy access all the way on the yokes, even to an easy reach here with the with the panel, uh, the keyboard, and any of the avionics are within easy reach of the pilot or co-pilot. Um, flying the aircraft is easy. What I talked about earlier to start up, uh, these two levers are forward when you're ready to taxi. Then from here on out, you you all your operations are with the uh, uh, power lever and you literally taxi out, uh, take off. Um, the nice thing about it, another a great key feature of this aircraft is the steering, nose wheel steering on this. It's a full functional functional nose wheel steering with an out, a lockout that you can actually spin the aircraft around on one tire, just like you would a tail wheel airplane or anything like that. Uh, so it has a very good, um, you know, small or short distance turnaround point. Uh, so easy operations within a tight ramp area, uh, you know, operating around uh, multiple aircraft or, or uh, uh, vehicles. Uh, once you're out on the runway for takeoff, uh, you know, there's nothing that says happiness like 1,200 horsepower. And so when you advance the throttle on this aircraft on takeoff, you can feel that 1,200 horsepower pushing you into the seat. And then you start, your, you start out and at about 90 knots rotate the aircraft and you start climbing out. And as I mentioned earlier, approximately a 4,000 foot a minute rate of climb at sea level, uh, climbing up to 34,000 feet, so only a, a, around 18 minutes uh, of total time in doing that. The upside to that is that what you look at the uh, operations of your aircraft, You in a turbine aircraft like this, you want to be at altitude as fast as possible. So once you do that, you're up at altitude, you're up at cruise speeds faster, you're up to less fuel, fuel consumption faster, um, and you're going to your destination faster, which makes us the best performing aircraft in this market, and I say best performing by meaning um, all flights, uh, if, if you consider the complete flight of the aircraft uh, from start up to shut down uh, on a per trip basis, we actually outperform up through the Phenom 100 jet. Uh, sure, if you were to do a, a drag race at 34,000 feet, uh, the Phenom 100 would be a faster aircraft, but we, through all aspects of the, of the operation of the, of, uh, of the flight plan, uh, you're literally looking at from start up to shut down. We have a faster climb rate. Uh, we can operate after off shorter fields, uh, fully reversible. Uh, car, uh, the prop is fully reversible, so short field operations is really doable. And by short field, I mean around 2,500 feet or greater as far as uh, the size of your runway. So um, I think that's just a kind of general overview of the whole aircraft, uh, just over itself. I mean, obviously, it's not a ground school. It's just a a familiarization of, of what the aircraft is and uh, you know to <clears throat> what we've put into this airplane I can honestly believe I've been in this business since 1978 and I have not seen a better built uh, better performing uh, aircraft in this class is absolutely a truly amazing airplane to fly and as, and as I say to many customers it, it flies as good as it looks <laughs>